Welcome to the Equinity Podcast, where horse owners just like you share their incredible Equinity stories and how Equinity is changing their horses' lives. Whether you're searching for something to give your performance horse better focus, faster recovery, and more stamina, or in the extreme case where all hope seems lost, give your horse what it needs to help heal at a cellular level, you'll find it here. So jump in on today's episode to hear how Equinity is helping horses worldwide. Now, welcome your host, John Dowdy. Hello and welcome to this week's Equinity Podcast. We are swinging out into Oregon this week. We've got Kathy Moss on the call. Kathy, welcome to the Equinity Podcast. Hey, thanks, John. I'm real tickled to be here. Well, it's always exciting. And uh, you called me, it was around the end of April, with a lot of questions. You had a very unique situation about uh, your horse that's 18 to 20 years old uh, named Sugarfoot. Uh, before we get into this story, because we're going to be talking about a se- severe founder, also the horse had PSSM, and uh, as a um, precursor, what did your vet actually tell you about this horse? When he saw the x-rays on both front feet, uh, even when he first saw her, but when he saw the x-rays to confirm, he says he has never had a horse survive this severe a founder. That is incredible because now this horse is running around. And so we'll get into <laughs> <laughs> so, we will get into that story, but let's get into a little bit of your background. Uh, tell us about your background. And I also know that you do some cowboy poetry. But uh, so I might put you on the spot to rattle something off for us, but give us some of your background. Oh, just, and... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I was raised with a horse trader, not a trainer. Well, he was, but he was, we considered him a horse trader. And so what he would do is he would find horses that were troubled horses and he'd bring them home and he'd have me do the groundwork with them. And then he would take them out and he would day ride for different ranches throughout eastern Oregon and then we would resell and then we would find other troubled horses so we saved hundreds and hundreds of horses from the slaughterhouse but as a as a kid I was 9 10 and 11 doing the groundwork I learned a lot about um, horse language and you know groundwork and um, at that size of a person working with horses you really have to figure out what the horse is trying to say and how you can finagle it to yeah. where it comes out to be a good thing right. <laughs> but anyway so um it really sent me on a journey of, of horsemanship and um trying to teach people and help people and help horses get together better mm-hmm. and i got a real quick short story when i was 10 i bought my first pony mule and pop paid 15 dollars for it down at the sale barn and uh, he says, this, he says, you're going to bring that mule home. I said, all right. So he made me lead that pony or that, that mule all the way home, which was a mile and a half away. And he was an unbroke mule. He didn't even know how to lead. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, man. so I had learned a few new words um, along the way. But also mom said, man, Kath, you have the patience of Job. And I thought, if Job would come down here and help me lead this thing, you will home, Mom, I would be so happy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and then when I turned 13, I bought, I sold Fred, and I bought my first full-grown filly to start from ground zero, no hands on her, to um, to, uh, competition as far as play days and that type of stuff as a kid. um, And again... When we put the halter on her, kind of let her around a little bit, and Pop said, lead her home. And he turned around and left, and it was another mile and a half. I had to lead her home. Oh, man. So with that, it it creates kind of a little bit of a character, and I have a little bit of an odd sense of humor for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that would do it, I would think. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it just, uh, you know, you learn to laugh and giggle at different things, but I also learned a lot not by book, but by actual um, doing and, you know, thinking and kind of communicating with the horses. And it's worked very well for me and the, and the people that I work with. Sure. So 
this and what is really cool is now that I have um because I do pressure points and all those things to help with horses this uh this equinity horse xl is even making me better um at at doing this because some of the things that equinity does for horses which I know we'll get into later has uh will will benefit these horses a lot and I'll we'll explain that a little bit later on but Sure. Yes. Now, uh, at what time in your life did you start getting into the uh, poetry? About, um, I was writing it during high school, um, but it was probably, I was probably about 32 when uh, I had written, my dad had gotten pretty sick, and so I was trying to capture some of his, his stories, and they all came out into poems. And so I wrote a little book called Cowboy in the Making, and it was all of his stories in poetry form. And I printed out a hundred books, and I sold those all in one day. And I thought, I better do something. <laughs> I better <laughs> yeah. make a few more books. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh wow. So. <laughs> so so you uh, have a couple CDs that are international. I you know I do, John. I. It's amazing. I didn't realize that cowboy poetry would take me around the world. Yeah. It was just something that I did for just because. Right. But uh, I I wrote, uh, I produced one that's called The Truth, and they are stories of the buckaroos and the, the Western women that I know of. And it went in 2019, it went to the International Western Music Association uh, Album of the Year which wow. is the most played album around the world. And then in 2020, I released my next album, which was Wink, or um, I'm sorry, They Come Prancing. And it is now in the top five. And here in the next few weeks, I will know if I actually made a second album worldwide for most played poetry CD. Well, that's incredible. Now, so, I know there's some other big names out there, Cowboy Poetry. But you're yeah. you're uh, not starting to knock them off. Sounds like <laughs> <laughs> knock them off like down the ladder is what I meant. <laughs> right, right. Oh, now it's on. <laughs> oh yeah. See what happens when you're just talking and the wrong words come out. I... Of the <laughs> no, um, Baxter Black back in '98. Um, he had come to a show that we were at, and he come up my friend had knew known him and told him he needed to come and see me and so he walks up and says you know i hear you do cowboy poetry he says uh, give me a poem and i was like all right i will so i pop out this little poem and he's like why are you not on stage and i said there ain't no way because i had seen him on stage and it's like you know his fingers up his nose flying on the floundering around on the ground and it's like there's no way yeah and he says you know too bad and he turned around and walked off and I got to thinking about all the stories that I write about are actual true things that uh, was maybe a little bit on the funny ones, a little bit of imagination, but mostly true. Mm -hmm. But um, and I just knew the stories needed to be told. And, and he was giving me an opportunity um, to share them. And anyways, and so a year later, I decided um, a year later, anyways, I opened for him. Oh, wow. And from there, um, and hopefully, um, been down into Elko, you know, just traveling around, doing different things, down in New Mexico, um, Texas, and Colorado, and, and just doing poetry. And it's the, the cowboy poetry world is so absolutely incredible with down-to-earth people. Mm -hmm. It is insane. If you ever have an opportunity... Uh, go listen to these guys because they are absolutely incredible storytellers and amazing, amazing people for sure. Well, that was a great lead up. So we're going to have to request a poem at this time, if you would be so kind. I would love to. <laughs> we're, um, we're and, ready. And <laughs> well, I was afraid I was going to lose some of the horses names that we had worked. And this is called Old Names. Old Pet, Bill and Banjo, Buck and Rony too, Smokey, Badger and Rusty, just to name a few. Take old Cougar Bait and Chalk Eye, 
remembering back when there was Winnipeg, Hey Lady, Lark, Doc, and then Barney, Silver, Rossi, and Booger. <laughs> Can't forget old Jack, Brandy, Breezy, Fanny, and Breaker. And she's the newest of the pack. There was Cleo, Hazel, and Wendy, old Mad Cat Bar, Pat, Birdie, and Chance. He could pace with any car. Now there was Motor Mouse and Mighty Mouse and Minnie Mouse to start, along with Rat Pink and Thunder. And Princess, she was smart. Chaz, Mac, Jess, and Ebony, the colts that we rode. And then came Bubbles Possum. <laughs> On the ground, we were thrilled. The list is miles long, and it brings back memories of youth and the challenges that shaped our destiny. So that list is miles long. May their stories carry on. All right. That was awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll throw some. Let's, maybe I'll, I should make a CD. Yes, maybe you should. That was that was my one-handed applause going on there. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, thanks, John. Oh, <laughs> wow. Appreciate that. Yeah. Now, do you have a, a website where people can uh, purchase these CDs of yours? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's it's dot com. Okay, and one more time, spell that out for us. A K Moss. M-O-S-S dot com. A-K-Moss.com. Awesome. Yep. Well, that is fantastic. Yeah, I have, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's on YouTube. I have a couple of CDs, um, or not CDs, YouTube videos and stuff. So it's kind of a fun place to go. And, um, yeah. No, that's great. That is great. So you had reached out to me, as I mentioned, on the uh, around the 28th of April with uh, – Quite a few questions. You, how did you acquire uh, Sugarfoot? Miss Sugarfoot came to me on April first. Um, if you want the hot backstory on her, um, she was my mom's good friend's horse, and Sugarfoot had been in um, search and rescue. She was on the sheriff's posse. Um, she did parades, she did rodeo entries, she, she is a little white Arab, and just as wonderful as can be. But um, when mom's friend had gotten cancer, she asked her kids to take care of her, and after Lila passed away, one of the boys called mom and said, would you come and get her, or we're going to take her to the sale? So mom went down and saw her and she started to cry. And she called me and says, Kat, can you bring her in? And when they delivered her on April 1st, she was about 300 pounds underweight. Uh, she looked like she had Cushing's. Her feet were about a foot and a half long. I'm going to cry over this, so forgive me. Um, it's all right. It's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, they hauled her of uh, an hour and a half to get to my place and unloaded her. And I told my husband, you know, I'd probably send her since she's retired, send her to a horse rescue. Um, when I saw her unload, I took a picture and I sent it to my husband. And he said, that mare is not going anywhere. She's going to stay here till she dies. And so with that, I took me on a journey of founder uh, that I had never never understood before because I didn't deal with a whole lot of founder in my in my childhood but um when I we own a meat shop here in in uh, our little town and and I have one of my employees who has a young girl by the name of Carly and Carly was kind of looking for something to do and she really liked horses but she's never had the opportunity so I introduced this little mare to Carly and a whole new life has bloomed out of out of that one introduction, and uh, with that, <clears throat> um, we took her to the vet. I had Carly go to the vet with me, um, and the vet actually had said at that point when he took the X-rays, he said she's too severe. I mean, her her paddle bone is almost perpendicular with the ground, and um, she had gotten really lame there for about a week and I told Carly I don't know if we can pull her out 
And as we were cleaning her foot, we hit an abscess. We drained the abscess and took her back to the vet. Got that all taken care of. And um, with uh, with the help of of everybody around, we've, we've made a tremendous comeback. With her. Yeah, sure. that's that is incredible. So, what was uh, what went through your mind when uh, the vet told you he had never seen one come back from this kind of severity of a founder? I have a little bit of a bullheaded streak. What? <laughs> we could not guess that. I know. <laughs> I, who would guess that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like you have not met me yet. No, no. <laughs> You try leading a mule from um, uh, for an hour or a mile and a half. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought you know I've seen this mare on good days, and I've seen her on bad days. But I've seen her on good days, and there every ounce of that little mare wants to go forward. She wants something to do and someplace to be, and she wants to be a part of. On the bad days, um, which are getting less and less all the time, John or. Um, you know, are tough, but, um, nothing like that one day where I thought tomorrow morning, if we can't pull this together, we're going to go ahead and let her go. Yeah. And you know, what's really cool. I have to tell you when we started this equinity conversation and I was kind of grasping at straws and, um, I found some fantastic boots for her and all this great stuff, but we, um, I had her trimmed twice. And 60 days, when those guys came, let's see, in four weeks, I'm sorry, let me back up. In four weeks, I had her come back to be trim, or they came back to trim her again. And they trimmed off more soul than they ever thought they could off that mare. And granted, her feet are still bruised. Her, you know, the, the soul is still a little bit bruised. But the healing on those hooves, John, is incredible. Yeah. And both of those guys said, I can't believe how much we're taking off this there um, to get that, uh, that, that I don't, I don't know for sure how to explain it, but that, that excess growth underneath the hoof. Yep. Um, anyways, when they started peeling that off, they were kept thinking, all right, the bone's got to be here. The bone's got to be here. So with me saying that to you, I cannot wait. This is only 60 days into the program. Right. I can't wait. For 90 days I can't wait for six months and taking those x-rays again and then having that evidence that founder can be fixed if if it happens like this because this mare's got another good 10-15 years of of activity if we can keep keep her going like she is right now sure and you know when you had acquired the horse so you're that was around the first of April so you're looking but you were also at a little bit of uh, limitations because, you know, with being foundered and also with possible PSSM, it's not like you can change a whole lot. And so you're you're limited in what you can use. And when you came across the Equinity Horse Excel, what went through your mind when you first found that? Oh, crud. As soon as I, because I was going through dozens and dozens and dozens of different supplements and stuff that I would kind of might help her along. And as soon as I saw Aquinity XL and realized it's amino acids, that's all it is. And there's no bulk. I don't, there's no sugars. There's no starches. There's nothing in it. It's like, this is my go-to. This is where I got to start. And that's why when I called you, I was like, all right, you know, this, I am laying it out on the table, John. Yeah. I got a lot of stuff going on. And um, you're like, you know, I think, I think this is a benefit. And then you also, um, talked about giving her like 30 days on just the XL before I went to the oil. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, we can try that. But when I realized the oil is cold pressed, um, black seed, you know, it had, it had everything. Yep. Um, and I thought the, the, for the first week, I thought I'm just going to do what John says. And I thought, no, can't do it. We're, we're giving her the, the whole gamut. Sounds, um, sounds like I my wife. Was, <laughs> there's no sense in trying to compare. <laughs> I already know this is going to be a good combination. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, for those of you that are tuning in, uh, so I'll go through a, 
through each of these products. So the Aquinity Horse XL, it's 100% pure amino acids. There's no fillers, no sugars, no starches, and there's no loading dose. So a serving size is just a little teaspoon, 5.2 grams. Put it right on top of the feed. They eat it right up. And what it's specifically designed to do is give the body what it needs to release its own repairing hormones. And once that happens, which begins within hours, uh, the body can send its own hormones to its own problem areas. And so this is why it works in so many ways. And it's not, uh, or I'll say it doesn't fit into a specific supplement category. In other words, it's not a hoof supplement. It's not a joint supplement. It's not a shiny coat supplement or muscle building or recovery. It's not any of those per se. We're just giving the body what it needs to help release its own repairing hormones. And then the body sends its own hormones to its own problem areas. And so, uh, Kathy, when you called and explained, you know, the situation you're in and, you know, you're really at a crossroads because you have to have something that works now. It works fast and it's not going to mess up the other things that you're holding this whole horse together with, you know, band-aids and straw and and bubble gum yeah yeah yeah, mail and wire and whatever else you know um, (laughs) (laughs) so you know and that's why i started this podcast a little over three years ago because there were so many stories and you know if you're in a situation where you know at the extreme which is what this was um you know the odds of this helping are very very good and you know, when it comes to founder, you know, people ask, oh, is it going to unrotate the coffin bone and do this and that? Well, here's what I know. It's going to help give the body what it needs to repair at the cellular level. And then specifically with the hooves, it really helps thicken that sole, which supports the coffin bone, and then ultimately helps with the overall health, strength, and growth of that hoof, which is going to give the farrier more to work with in a shorter amount of time. So you're you're going to help get that horse back to where they where you want them to be in a shorter amount of time. So with the Equinity Horse XL, highly recommend every horse, even the performance horses that don't have any issues. It's going to help with just the soft tissue repair, recovery, stamina, the focus. They haul better, and so it's great for all these horses. And no matter what scenario or situation they're in, so we've been on the market for seven years with this product, and it's going stronger than ever. Uh, in March of last year, so a little over a year ago, uh, Dr. Brugan out of Arkansas um, had come to us and asked if we had ever thought about coming out with another product. And I said, well, you know, not for the sake of coming out with one. It would have to work with what we have and make sense. And he goes, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. He goes, well, you know, I'm a big fan of oils. And my first reaction was, are you serious right now? I mean, you obviously know how many oils are on the market. He goes, I know, I know, but there's nothing like what I have in mind. <laughs> and I said, okay, what do, what do you got? He says, well, you know, there's so many oils on the market, just like you say, but, you know, what people don't look at is the quality of the oil. And you know, a lot of the oils that are being used are high in omega-6s, which causes inflammation. He goes, so we're going to use a flaxseed-based omega-3 oil, which is high in omega-3s, and that's going to help with inflammation. So it's a really good quality omega-3 oil. <clears throat> the second component is a natural cold-pressed vitamin E. And so it's got a 1,000 international units of natural cold-pressed vitamin E. And so if people are using a synthetic vitamin E, they might as well just pour it on the ground because the horse can't even utilize a synthetic vitamin E. So that's the second component. And the third component is the colloidal silver. And so there's nothing unique about any one of these three main ingredients because there's products on the market that have two of the three or they've got one of the three. But what they're mixed with typically isn't the best overall ingredient. So, you know, ours is a half gallon. You know, it's El Primo top shelf. And the whole reason why we came out with it, you know, with the help of Dr. Brugan is twofold. One, when used in combination with the amino acids, remember the amino acids are given the body what it needs to help repair cells. And so this combination of the ultimate OEC is giving those repaired cells some nutrition, which helps operate at optimal levels, the cells. And secondly, these three ingredients, the flaxseed based omega-3 the natural cold press vitamin E and the colloidal silver serves as a really powerful antioxidant, which helps reduce inflammation. And so a lot of the feedback that we've received um, just over the last year, 
we've had, you know, all the horses do phenomenally well with the amino acids, but maybe the horse is still tying up or they don't want to drink when they're being hauled, or maybe they've got a cough or just in your overall situation, trying to bring your horse back, you know, to, to where you need them to be when they added that OEC, well, in combination with the amino acids, it just seems to be the perfect combination for these horses. And uh, when you first called me up and I explained both of these products to you, the reason why I kind of always recommend just starting off with the amino acids is because it, it works so fast within hours, it starts working. And the vast majority of people see changes in 30 days or less. Now, sometimes it can go longer than that, but I'm talking upper 90 percentile of people see changes in 30 days or less. And so I always like to, you know, have people see results. And so that's why I recommend, you know, amino acids for the first 30 days and then add the OEC. But I will say that most people just do what you did and they listen to me and yes, and then they just do their own thing, which is perfectly fine. <laughs> It's okay. Yes. It's okay. It's okay, John. You just tell me everything, and I'm going to go do what I need to do. Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yeah. So. And you, know, you know, also, what's interesting also is that I have a, a sorrel horse. He's an eight-year-old. And I've had him for um, since he was six months old. And every every since I got him, he was what, they call a, what we call a stall baby. He was... Um, raised in a, in a little stall for the first six months of his life and they turn him out in the round pen to run around and then he'd go back in the stall and that was pretty much his his deal oh right um but anyways i got him at six months old and um every time he would bend down to eat um grain or because you know, i put him on a supplement or whatever um he would be pawing the ground and he'd slap his you know his feet and it would knock it all over the place and he'd be circling around it he was never eating under calm circumstances. And so I did a bunch of research on, you know, why is he just throwing a fit every time he eats? He just is pacing and moving from one foot to the other, shuffling around. And when you told me about this, we had talked about it. I mentioned Hitchy to you. And you know what? I got to say within a week, that horse can stand there and eat without moving a foot. <laughs> and that is one of the coolest yeah. things because he has struggled with eating comfortably mm -hmm. his whole his whole entire life. And now it's the only time that he really gets upset is if I'm late. And he really does not like it if he doesn't have his oil on his food. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, wow. You have got to have the oil on the yes. food. He talks to me now. Oh, it used man. to be like, yeah, okay. But That's incredible. I should have recorded him this morning because both of them were over there just like, oh, oh, oh. We get our we get our little oil this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, uh, at the beginning of this whole story, you had mentioned Carly, who's thirteen, and you took her to the vet. And uh, what has been her experience through this last sixty days, seeing this transformation of Sugarfoot? Oh my gosh! So, what Carly wants to do? She's a she's a very quiet young lady, but she when she saw Sugarfoot, she, her heart broke for her. Um. But what she wanted to do is she's right. She wants to write a book called um, "Life After Founder with Sugarfoot." Wow. Um, she also is doing a picture board for 4-H, and to to go from where Sugarfoot started, what we've done as far as cut out the starches for the PSSM and and the founder, and you know all the things, the dietary things, and then have. The, the finished product or the finished sugar put at the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so when she realized she was never a rider um, and she just, she just wanted to hang around with horses. But um, when she realized that there would not be, she started riding Hitchy and she was thinking, no, oh, this is going to be cool. Can we do this with sugar foot? And I'm thinking, mm, no, she's, she's retired. We probably won't ever have this as an opportunity. Yeah. So then she decided maybe we'll do Liberty, which is work Liberty without lead lines and halters and all that stuff so that she can do um, exhibitions for um, different places around the County on horse communication. And here in the last two weeks, we actually have talked about 
not not now, but here in the future, we're actually talking about putting a saddle on Sugarfoot. Holy smokes. Actually, and probably we, we've discussed it, and we're looking at when we hit six months, I mean, she's, she's improved that much. Yeah. And and you when you go out there and that little mare drops her nose in that halter and is like leading you to the leading you to the gate. You can't, you cannot ignore that. And that's the only <laughs> no. reason why we're even considering. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, she wants to and, go do and be. Yeah. And the video you sent, it's like, this is incredible. It doesn't even look like the same horse. And we'll, at our uh, website at teamequinity.com, let me repeat that, teamequinity.com, uh, we'll have this podcast transcribed and we'll put the before and after pictures. Because as I told you when I first saw the the comparison, it's like, well, the first one looks like a large pony and the other one looks like Superman, you know, just busted out because it doesn't even look like the same horse at all. Just the yeah. transformation in 60 days is incredible. You know, she lost her hair when when uh, Colleen, my, my vet, had seen her. She instantly thought she had Cushing, first and foremost. That was just a picture of her. She didn't get a chance to actually do any blood work. I had another vet do that for me. But um, when we started her on a quinity and she started losing her hair, I literally had to go on Facebook because we have a, a Facebook page for Sugarfoot and Carly and ask if anybody had a horse blanket um, because she was going so fast, the chill of the night would have, you know, she just was not ready mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> to, be, to be that. I mean, because it was coming out in in gobs and gobs and gobs. I took pictures of it. It was insane how fast she lost her hair. But, uh, yeah, so no no cushing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing what, what her body was trying to do. And we really had to try to keep it slow, John, just because um, there was so much that body has to do to rebuild itself. And this PSSM is, is a very serious deal with her. Yep. And so... Um, to ever take her off of this, I don't think I would, just because you see her and you the light in her eye and her ambition, and is like I never want that to go away. Sure. Well, and you know, when you mention you know this all this hair loss, and you know when you understand what's going on internally, again, you know this isn't a band aid or you know something is just a little stop the the pain here or you know whatever you want to describe that as you know we're allowing the body to help repair itself and so you know when you look at that first image it's, she is a furry little thing yes she is <laughs> and um so you know the body is doing a lot of adjusting and fixing and mending and all kinds of things and then you look at the second picture just 60 days and that is you know what how a horse should look just sleek slick yeah. you know incredible now what and did, i think that's the amino acid in that yep. also goes where the body needs it so i don't have to look on the counter and say okay this is for muscle and this is for and this is for right. you just give the amino acid the protein does what it needs to do where it needs to do the most important part of the body at that moment and yeah. then it can fix the rest later yeah that's it's, right that's how I interpret it anyway. Yep. No, that's right. That's right. Now, uh, what was your uh, vet's response when, because obviously she had told you that she had never seen one pull through this. What are, what is she saying now? Or um, He is floored. Uh, <laughs> actually, he can't believe I, I took a picture and or a video and sent it to him. And, and he says, not even the same horse. It cannot be the same horse. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> And it's like, well, Leon, there's only one sugar foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. Well, I tell so you what. So I'm, I'm anxious to share it here. And, and you know, another, like I say, I would love to, to visit with you on this journey. But um, in another two or three months, yeah, see, absolutely. see where the x-rays are at and what's going on. Yeah, maybe we could do a follow-up po podcast with that. That'd be great. Sure. So, well, yeah, uh, and the other thing I want to make sure is the boots. I mean, there's there's a lot more to it than just the equinity. Sure. But the equinity is giving her that opportunity to heal, 
because we have our boots that cover our feet and we have the barriers and we have the, you know, vitamins and, you know, all of that stuff. But this here was an easy go to, no stress, no thought about it type thing to help her recover. Yeah. And I think that's a very important point too, because, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, that the Equinity Horse XL is not the miracle supplement. It's not the end all be all. It does help get your horse back to where you need them to be faster, which, you know, when it comes to the hoof quality and growth and everything, it, it allows that to happen to give your farrier more to work with in a shorter amount of time. And also we've had on podcast uh, in the past with uh, rescue facilities. And one of the challenges that they have to be careful with is trying to fix everything because you start fixing one thing and other things start falling apart and it's, you know, very right. precarious. Right. And so one of the things that we've heard over and over and over just by using the Equinity Horse Excel is it helps them get back faster without all the complications. And so that's pretty incredible. So, you know, it's so v- yeah. vitally important to be using a great vet and farrier. And if you need the boots and whatever it else you need, this is just going to help get you where you want to go faster, you know, and safer, you yeah. know, so that's great. Yep. Well, if there's anybody that's tuning in that, uh, and often this is what happens, they, they're looking for something and I think, oh, that sounds really good. But then the longer they listen, they're like, okay, well, now this sounds too good to be true because how can it do all this stuff? But, you know, we've got over 100 podcasts with, you know, well over 100 stories and lots of testimonials and the proof's always in the pudding. But if there's somebody that's on the fence and they're thinking, well, this really sounds good, is there anything that you would have to tell them that you haven't already spoken about in the last 37 minutes? Boy, John, I, I would say like so many, just do it. You can't, you cannot, it's, it's like less than a cup of coffee. You know, I, I wouldn't live, my horses will not go without this ever again. I just won't do it. No. Um, if you're on, if you're on the fence and you are looking just go on the website and look at the research that they've done from, from the amino acids to the cellular level to all of those things coming up to the cold compress, to the flaxseed, to the, you know, it's all there. It's all right there on your website and you can't get that anywhere else. I, you know, as far as an easy go-to place, just, just do it. Go and take a look. Don't take my word for it. Go take a look yeah. because, uh, it, it it changed our it changed my world and I didn't think I was going to have another horse in my world but apparently we got sugarfoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, and a happy thirteen year old on top of that. And a very very happy thirteen year old. <laughs> Go Carly! All right, we'll we'll be looking Go forward Carly. to her book as well. So okay, awesome. Well, Kathy Moss out of Oregon, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story with Sugarfoot here on the Equinity Podcast. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's all for this episode of the Equinity Podcast. For more information on purchasing Equinity, be sure to visit our website at teamequinity.com, where you'll also find product information as well as more testimonials on how others have seen amazing results by implementing Equinity into their horse's supplement regime. We'll have more stories on how Equinity is helping horses worldwide right here on a future episode of the Equinity Podcast.